I'm from St. Louis, so my fun fact is, since everyone was talking about sports, I'm not a, a sports enthusiast, but I am a true Cardinals fan. So if you don't like the Cardinals, sorry. I am, I am very much homegrown that way. Um, so who we are, I'm, I'm not going to actually say these things that are on the slides, but I will tell you that we're part of a national organization out of D.C. There are five chapters nationwide. There's no rhyme or reason why, where they're located. I will tell you that everything that we do in our office, though, in St. Louis, is not done anywhere else in the country. We are unique what we offer. So we have a prescription assistance program that's our flagship, and we provide medication, um, equipment, such as nebulizers, bedding casings, um, to low-income families that come to us through the pediatric hospitals in St. Louis. Um, so that is mainly what we do with that. My presentation is two-part. The first part is we had legislation passed, and so I'm first going to tell you how did we do that, because that's pretty, pretty amazing. So we did get um, legislation passed that Medicaid will reimburse for asthma education and home assessments in Missouri. So the first part is, how did we do it? And secondly, how are we implementing it? So first, and so what I'm going to tell you briefly is that, and hopefully I won't run out of time, and you can talk to me any time during the day, but it is all about relationships. I had a lot of relationships for 12 hours yesterday in the airport, and it's all about relationship building. So community and statewide partners, I can't say enough. We formed an asthma coalition in St. Louis, so that then brings together our community. But statewide, some of those are University of Missouri, the pulmonary medicine department we work closely with, and Southeast Missouri State University, which may not mean anything to you guys, but we have a guru of environmental science there who has an environmental institute who has really been the one who influenced CMMS to put the ruling out um, a couple years ago on encouraging states to pass the legislation because asthma in the clinical care setting is not enough. We really need home assessments and asthma education in addition to being in the clinic or an ER. Um, public policy, we did form a public policy committee that's comprised of lobbyists, legislators, advocacy um, personnel for pharmaceutical companies, local health care professionals. Department of Social Services in our state is who runs Medicaid. And then our Department of Health and Senior Services, we work closely with them because they have a grant through CDC for asthma. Asthma in Missouri is not um, a line item in the budget like it is in a lot of states. You really have to have a grant from the CDC. So the timeline, I wanted to go through that with you. So first off is in 2012, and if you read my bio, you'll see that we already had legislation, legislative success. I, got, I am a, a registered nurse, and I was a school nurse years ago, but um, part-time. And um, we saw the need because it is the number one reason kids uh, miss school. It's the number one uh, problem that school nurses have to take care of. So we had legislation passed, first in the country again, to stock the rescue medication in a public school setting for any child, not just those diagnosed, because we know there are tons of kids out there not diagnosed. Um, who has an asthma attack at school. And if you want to know some facts, we are now doing a research paper on the fact that we have our schools who send logs in at the end of the year so we now can tally that we have saved the state of Missouri just in our service area, in, the, in and around the St. Louis area, we have saved the state of Missouri a half a million dollars in nurses not having to call 911. So we will have that information. Thank you. And I will tell you, I'm going to be running over because I wouldn't plan on talking about that. But we asked our school nurses four questions, and they have to ask, and then they turn this log in at the end of the year, and the four questions are this. Did the child have known asthma? Number two, did you have to call 911? Did you have to call the parents from work, or did the child go back to the classroom? Two years in a row, we have now collected this data. We have more and more schools that come on board with us. But I will tell you that 82% of the kids go back to the classroom. So it's been amazing. And I have a partner pharmacy who provides all the free albuterol for us, and we give the nebulizers. So it's an amazing um, thing that we've got. So we had a legislative win. So we got recognition. I have some champion legislators. So first, you have to have the interest. And in, we had an interest in deepening the touch points to our client families who we now give medicines to. We know just because we give them medicines, we don't know if they know how to do it. We don't know what they're doing out there. But we wanted to deepen our touch point. So we started gathering, and oh my god, I only have two minutes, so you guys, um, this is sorry. Um, 
We educated ourselves on articles around the country on home assessments, because there are studies going on all over the place. We talked to our community and state partners. We encouraged our public policy committee to pursue legislation. So then going into 2013, I was busy along with a couple of my staff, and there's only seven of us in my office, so we are very aggressive kind of workforce. Um, you don't want me as your boss. No, just kidding. Um, so I was aggressive January to May is when our legislative session is going on. I met with as many legislators as I could, found a sponsor for my bill, which was my previous sponsor, um, and then you want a champion. So in our state, it's the Republicans, so then you just, that's where you sit. Um, you have to explain the health care cost savings, and in Missouri, it's $80 million spent every year on asthma. It is the second most expensive cost in the state of Missouri. An uh, average kid on Medicaid, and you had some of your slides, but the average kid on Medicaid is allocated $3,300 a year. Um, some of these high-risk kids are spending nineteen dollars to 20000 a year, so we, you know, we push that to the legislators, and there's a $1,500 savings. Stop. $1,500 savings. Uh, <laughs> so um, we did, we took this to the director of social services. We had to win them over because there was no way we were going to pursue legislation if they, the Department of Medicaid did not agree with us. And then we submit, they asked us to submit a white paper. We submitted a white paper with all of our findings. Whoops, how do I go back? Oh, I don't know. What was that? Um, what the last one, it said proposed legislative language was submitted December 1st. So then we went into December of 2014. We got proposed legislation sponsored and supported by our legislators. We passed the bill in July. It was a budget bill, $400,000 in the budget with a 1.2 federal match. Second part, I have, I'm just now getting to my second part. Can we applaud if you want me to go on? Because, see, I'm going to run out of time here. Is that okay, Anisha? Will you be mad at me? Okay. So here's the implementation. I'll fly through this. Start me. I swear I'll be done in two minutes here. So we had monthly phone calls facilitated from the Department of Social Services who put all the community partners on the phone. First thing we had to do was decide, what are the credentials for these providers, asthma educators and home assessors? We established that, just what you said, what you heard me say. AEC, our asthma educators, it's a national uh, accreditation, and then it's a state program because of our guru at Southeast Missouri State who does home assessments. Then we had to look at the structure for overseeing these providers. Again, the University of Missouri oversees our asthma educators, and if you know who Ben Francisco is, he is the one who heads up that. And then our guru at Southeast Missouri State oversees the home assessors. We have a 1-800 number set up through the, home, the Environmental Institute. And, that, and then the way the referrals come in is they're referred from the Medicaid data who show these kids that are high risk. And then we have the delegation of services. They then disperse where the kids are in the state and where the home assessment needs to be done. And if asthma education needs to be done, it goes through Ben Francisco at University of Missouri. And then you communicate that with the primary care or the federal qualified health care clinic. What is a high risk asthma patient? For us in the state of Missouri, in one year, it's two or more uh, emergency visits or hospitalizations, presence of oral steroid use, frequent SABA inhaler refills or overuse. Here are the CPT codes we use for those. They are already established. This is what we're doing with it. I have worked out a deal with the Environmental Institute that my staff does all the telephonic asthma coaching, so we are reimbursed through the Environmental Science because there are science institute because there are no CPT codes for telephonic. And then that's the end of that. So um, anyway, that's my part. I have lots more I could say, but I appreciate it. Thank you. In addition to that, statewide, though, we now have a managed care contract. So we are using those same, the price structure here with our managed care contract for Medicaid and the state. Um, but the beauty of this is that I, if you have managed care contracts, I actually wrote in that you could have, uh, what do they call it? It was an addendum to the home assessment because I'm charging $25 for every telephone call for my, for my staff, for the managed care contract. Statewide, I can't because there's no CPT code for it. I can't remember the, the word he used for it with the contractor at the Medicaid company. So well, we can add up a little thing at the end of the CPT code for a modifier. Assessments. A modifier. A modifier. Yes, thank you. That's what it is. I'm new to this being a provider, actually. Who delivers the asset education certified asset educator? Absolutely. Pardon? Are they clinically licensed? An asthma educator, it's a certification process statewide. That I know. Oh. 
to be an AEC, you do not have to be an RN or a, a respiratory therapist either. You just have to have gone through the program and take the, take the test. Well, you know, CMS sent that ruling out that, you know, the providers can be AECs and home assessors. Now, that's the credentialing part that our state had to go through, and we decided to go with, um, you had to be an AEC. Now, there are a lot of community health workers that are going to be doing this, so they're called mentees. So the mentees can't bill. The mentor is the biller, which is the AEC. And you're hoping that the mentees will eventually be AECs, right? But chances are it's not going to happen. So state, because yeah, there's not. I mean, the, the pass rate, the passing rate alone for an AEC is only like 60%. Yeah. So you know, um, and home assessments that is going to be a state-run program. It's not national. It's not national, but it's pretty comparable, I would think, to any national other state programs. Yeah, I believe in New York. Um, if you're not clinically licensed, uh, you just have to bill under the provider, and that's how it will work. Okay. No. No. You do not have to be clinically licensed in Missouri. Yeah. Yeah. Any other comments or questions? Okay, if there are no more questions, um, you'd like to end this panel. And of course, uh, as you can see, uh, Everybody has a lot to contribute and a lot to speak about. And due to time constraints, we are cutting it down. If anybody wants to talk to our expert panelists during the break or lunch or networking, feel free to do so. Thank you. <laughs>